Young Chen, our main character, starts his day on a bad note. He has lost his job, and he sits in his car angry about what has happened to him. He wonders why horrible things like that always find their way toward him and why he is already a victim. Now that he has lost his job, he has no other choice than to return to car hailing job at least. He won't stay without work for a relatively long period of time. He reassures himself that he will be fine, saying that no matter what happens to him, life goes on. He begins his car hailing service, and he gets a notification that there is an order about one kilometer ahead of him. He accepts the order so he can go pick up the guest, and after he accepts, he receives a notification that the order has been accepted by him. Working at car hailing means he will meet a lot of strange passengers with different behaviors, and he thinks he can live with that. He picks up his phone and calls the passenger from who he has received his order, he tells the passenger that he has arrived. At the location the passenger picked, but the lady says she is still doing her makeup and she will meet him there as soon as she can, that's in about 20 minutes. He imagines meeting her and getting a system notification that he has successfully bonded with a host and his life will change forever. Despite his life changing and the system involvement in his life, he feels there are people who still don't like him. He meets another female customer who tells him that he isn't skilled at driving and he is too slow. She claims she will give him a bad review, then she will complain and report him to the police for dangerous driving. She immediately writes a bad review for him, but he receives a system notification that he has completed the mission. The system congratulates him for completing the mission based on strength and tells him he has received no negative review. The system tells him that he will be rewarded with the ownership of the Heiduan building, so he should. Go to the management office of the Hattie Financial Building the following day to get his transfer letter, real estate certificate, and other documents. He screams because the reward is more than he has expected. He becomes the king of the entertainment circle and medical skills. He invests in gods, and he has artistic talents and several kinds of skills in his hand, and eventually becoming the best of the best. He owns a company, and he goes there. His attendant welcomes him inside the company by bowing down to him. He also greets all his staff and tells them to return to their work. He becomes the king of the world, having several females and concubines around him. I'm sure you may be wondering how all these had happened and the fast progression of Yang's life. Before it all started, on that day he lost his job, he had visited his company, Zing Long, which is a Yin City financial building. He met with his boss, Mr. Zhang, angry that he couldn't sign a project he had commissioned and worked on in his name. He argues with Zhang that he planned the project himself, so why can't he sign on to the project and get his commission? Zhang reminds him that everything he does in the company belongs to the company, and the company belongs to him, so by virtue of that, he has the right to do whatever he wants. Yang clings his hands together, refusing to accept something that horrible. He tells Zhang that he is just an idiot for continuing to work with that vampire company that just sucks out their employees' efforts. He walks away, refusing to continue working at the company. When he goes to pack his belonging, his colleague advises him that he is making a mistake. They tell him that he shouldn't be that impulsive, especially since he doesn't know how much command Zhang has in his hand. Another of his colleague advises him that if he loses his job, what will his girlfriend do to take care of her paralyzed father? He looks at his lovely girlfriend's picture, thinking of the decision he is about to make. He tells his colleagues that no matter what they are, he is leaving. He tells them that his parents had left him with a house and a car before they died, and he still has those, and he can make a living with them. He tells his colleagues that he will start an online car hailing business with the car until he finds another job. He leaves his workplace and tells his girlfriend about his resignation, and he hasn't left the office car park before he receives a text message from her. In the text, she tells him that they should break up, she says that they should break up. She tells him that he can't give her the life she wants, and they are two worlds away from each other. She says she is off to pursue her dreams, and she can't allow him to keep holding her off. He can't believe that she will send that kind of message to him, and he feels if he hears her voice, her decision may change. He calls her number, but he hears the voicemail that the number he has called is temporarily not available. He rests by his car, saying that he is having a really bad day. He claims he doesn't know what he has done to deserve such a horrible day. However, he knows that no matter what happens, the world doesn't stop because he has a problem, and life goes on. So it's at that time that he gets a notification that an order is available for him at about a kilometer ahead of him. He accepts the order, and he gets a system notification that he should go to the order location immediately. He rides towards the order location, and he gets to the park. He calls the lady and says that he has gotten to her location and she should come out to meet him. However, she tells him that she has just put on her location and it will take her at least 20 minutes for her to completely prepare for the trip so he should wait for her. He gets angry at her. He already has a horrible day, and a horrible customer doesn't seem like what he wants to add to his already horrible day. 
He screams at her asking her why she had ordered the ride early, and he tells her she could have waited until she is done before she made that order. He tells her that next time, she should ensure she has finished her makeup, and she is already downstairs before she makes any order. Instead of apologizing, she threatens him, she tells him that she is almost done and that if he gives her about half an hour, she is sure she will be ready, but if he cancels the trip, she will file a complaint against him. He doesn't want her threats to get to him. He tells her to do whatever she wishes to do, and as for him, he is cancelling her order. He picks up his phone to do that, and just as he does so, he receives a complaint. In the complaint, he sees the young lady had written that she had never seen an unqualified driver before. She says that he admonished her and even cancelled her order in an excessive manner. He reads it and screams. That is the first order is a car hailing driver, and he has gotten an ad review. The day can't get more bad as he sees a strange figure in front of him. The figure looks like a fairy and she jumps around him. He is terrified to even look at her. He asks her what is going on and who she is then she tells him that she has detected a host and she wants her binding condition to be met. She tells him that the bad review reward system wishes to bind with him, and she asks him to confirm the binding with either a yes or a no. He doesn't understand what is going on. He understands that there can be rewards for good reviews, but he has never heard of a review being rewarded before. He asks her what the hell she is doing. The fairy explains to him that the system can reward him for every bad review he gets, and as soon as he accepts the binding agreement, he will get rewards for all his bad reviews. She further explains to him that the reward can vary and it can be money, property, luxury cars, or even skills. She tells him that the binding is just a cheating skill and that there is no reason why he hesitates to bind with her, and he should do that as soon as possible. He agrees to bind with her, and she pins him to a corner and seals their agreement with a kiss. She tells him that the host binding command system has been received. Before leaving, she tells him that the bad review system and the host have successfully bonded, and he is advised to seek bad reviews against passengers who look odd or unpleasant. She tells him that he also needs to look out for good reviews, not because of the system but to ensure that his license is not collected from him if he keeps accumulating bad reviews. So to maintain his driver rating and not get his license cancelled, he still needs good reviews. She continues and tells him that Sisfi he has received a bad review that day. The system will reward him with a 28% stake in the All Island Hotel Group. And after taking the stake, he will become the second highest shareholder in the hotel group. He is also invited to dine at the All Island Hotel, where a transfer of the equity agreement will be signed and delivered to him. He is shocked. That seems like a jackpot to him. He says the system is so powerful that he gives that much gift after binding. He receives another notification that a passenger has an order for him at about 1.2 km from his location, and the order location is All Island Hotel. He sees that the order is actually made in time, and it's just for him to go to the dinner at the All Island Hotel and also pick up his equity shares. He accepts the order immediately. When he gets there, he sees a young lady standing by the roadside. He asks her if she is the passenger with order ID 8043. She tells him yes, and he asks her to enter the car. When she enters, they begin the silent ride. When they get on the road, the passenger, Wang Jai, asks him why he keeps peeking at her through the mirror. He calls her beauty because he doesn't know her name. He asks her if she doesn't know how to drive, telling her that he isn't looking at her through the window, but he is looking at the road condition behind him. She gets angry because he asks her if she doesn't know how to drive. She asks him why he insulted her with that kind of reply when all she did was ask him a question. She tells him that it's obvious that he isn't a skilled driver, and he also drives very slowly. He keeps driving in the best way he can, but when he enters a pothole, she screams at him, asking him to take it easy. She feels he is driving roughly because of the way she has spoken to him, so she begs him that she is wrong and he should drive slowly. He refuses to drive well. She almost starts crying. She held support inside the car so she wouldn't fall. She begs him that she is really wrong. She starts screaming that people should help her. She gets very scared that he will kill her. She calls him brother again, telling him that she is scared. He asks her who is her brother, and he tells her it is only if he doesn't end up in an accident that she will leave that car alive, but he tells her that he can at least let her go alive if she calls him daddy. She doesn't have a choice, she is already in tears, and she is weeping. She reluctantly calls him daddy. He comments that she is now behaving like a good girl, and he steps on the brake to allow her out of the car. He tells her that they have arrived at all the island hotels and he should get off from her car. She comes out in tears and calls him a bastard. She tells him to wait and see if she wouldn't give him a bad review, then lays a complaint about him and now calls the police to arrest him for dangerous driving. She indeed lays a complaint about him, and Yang gets a notification on his bad review portal that he has gotten another bad review. The portal congratulates him and tells him that he will be rewarded with the ownership of the Zing Long Finance Building. That is the building his former workplace is. His system tells him that he should go to the management office of the Zing Long Finance Building to receive the transfer letter, real estate certificate, and the other documents of the building. 
he jumps happily. He is glad that he is getting the Zing Long Finance building because that is the same building he used to work before. He feels he can now settle the old grudges that he has with his former boss, Jang, happily. He gets to the hotel like a boss and the person that first sees him is shocked. She is Wang, the same lady who he had almost killed in the car. She assumes that he is stalking her and asks him how he could dare to follow her around. She says that he really has a lot of nerve. He looks at her, mocking her. He calls her a good girl and refers to himself as her father, telling her that he has a spot reserved for himself there for a long time. The receptionist of all island hotels attends to him. She tells him that his seat is at table 8 and their staff will take him to his seat. Before he goes there, the attendant hands over a document to him, and he sees the equity agreement. The attendant tells him it's another document that their manager will like to pass on to him, so he should keep the document. She tells him that she will take him to his table now. Wang sees that he is a person of great status, and she tells him that even if she had misunderstood his intention in the car, she would never forgive him for what he has done to her. The attendant takes him to his table and tells him his meal will soon be ready. Wang waits there, too. She is at that hotel for a blind date, and she is waiting for her date. Her date eventually arrives, and she asks him if he is Mr. Jang Long. He stretches his hands toward her and tells her he is Jang. He also asks to confirm if she is Miss Wang, who has been introduced to him by the director. He asks her to please take her seat. Looking at them, Yang could see that they are on a blind date. As he sits and waits for the manager of his company, he sees his ex-girlfriend, Zhao Feifei, together with her best friend, Chen Xin, coming inside of the hotel. With a man old enough to be their father, Master Li, Immediately he sees them, he comments that it's a great coincidence, Chen Xin knows he won't let go of an opportunity to humiliate her friend, Zhao Feifei, so before the humiliation starts, she feels it's best. She approaches him and warn him otherwise. She speaks to Li telling him that she has just found a friend and she would like to say hello to Yang. She goes to Yang and confronts him, and she tells him that he is going too far and he has broken up with Zhu Feifei already, so he should leave the poor girl alone. She asks him what he is doing at that hotel, asking him if he is there to cause havoc. However, he tells her that he isn't going that low with them. He says he has nigh interest in gold-digging girls, and if they aren't ashamed that they are in their early 20s and they are spending time with men in their 40s and 50s, then he feels bad for their parents. Chan Zin gets angry, she screams at him, and Lee realizes that the conversation isn't going on like a conversation between friends, so he asks Chen Zin what is going on. She tells him it is okay, and he should go sit down, and she will meet him soon. Lee feels concerned. He says he can see they are having a bad conversation, and he doesn't think it is okay. So he asks Yang who he is. Yang introduces himself as Zhu Feifei ex-boyfriend. He further tells Lee that Zhu Feifei had just broken up with him on that day. He asks Lee when he linked up with his girlfriend and asks him if he isn't a male mistress. Lee concentrates on Zhu Feifei and asks her if Yang is right. She tells Lee that she hasn't just broken up with Yang. She claims that she has mentally broken up with him for a long time, and he is the fool that is just realizing the breakup on that day. She tells Lee that she has told him she isn't interested, and he has just refused to agree. She says that she indeed broke up with him that day, but she didn't expect that he will follow her to the All Island Hotel. She says that Yang is just there to bully her. Lee holds her by her neck and laughs. He tells Yang that he is pestering his girlfriend and Yang should leave as he is too annoying. If only they know that Yang isn't there for any of them. Lee feels it's about time he shows Yang that he is his boss at that place, and he calls the waiter telling her that she should call the company manager, Manager Cheng because he wants to speak to him. The waiter does as he has been commanded. Zhu Feifei also feels that she is a boss in that situation. She speaks to Yang, asking him if he should just leave the hotel now that the matter is still minor because if he doesn't leave, she will have to suffer later. Yang doesn't listen to them. He keeps drinking his tea without being bothered about all that they are saying. Wang looks at him and calls him a weirdo. She says that since the situation has come to that which she has been trying to avoid, she will also like to see how the situation will end. I'm sure you want to see how it will end too. Wang's date, Mr. Zheng, sees that she is interested in what is going on in that place. He asks Wang if Wang knows Yang. Wang tells her date that she doesn't know him, but she just came into his car hailing taxi. She narrates her experience with her date. She tells him that not only did Yang have a very bad attitude, but he also almost killed her by driving recklessly. He also ensured she calls him daddy before he allowed her to leave the car. So she got out of the car and gave him a bad review. Her date, Zhang, gets angry, and he asks how Yang could dare do something that horrible to a stranger. He says that Yang is too much and he deserves to be dealt with. He tells Wang to remain on their chair, and he will go over to Yang and teach him a lesson. However, Wang drags him back, she tells him that he doesn't have to be that impulsive, but he refuses her advice and goes there to boss at Yang. He gets to Yang, calls him brother, and tells him that Wang came inside his online taxi, and he bullied the poor girl. Yang doesn't bother denying what he has done. He doesn't even feel like he has done anything wrong. 
He looks at Jiang with an annoying eyes telling him that he really did all that and who is Jiang approaching him in that manner. Jiang introduces himself as Jiang Long telling him that he is Wang's blind date, and that if he tells Wang that he is sorry and he calls her aunt, he will spare him from the punishment of his offense. He continues and tells Yang that if he doesn't do as he has asked, he will throw him out of the hotel immediately. But Yang drinks his coffee with so much attitude asking Jiang who the hell is his father. Well, when your father is really something, you will really find it easy to answer the question of who is your father. So the question doesn't pose so much of an issue to Jiang. He tells Yang that his father is the chairman of Tianmu Investment, and he is also about to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. So he threatens that he will ask them to blacklist Yang from the hotel if Yang doesn't do as he has commanded him to do. So it looks like Yang is faced with two problems. He tells Jiang that, just like Jiang, they are both there to show him what they are really made of, and he is interested. The manager eventually arrives, running at Mr. Lee. He asks Lee why Lee didn't tell him in advance that he wants to come over for dinner. Then when he sees Jiang too, he recognizes Jiang. He says it looks like that day is a great day as two great people are at his hotel at the same time to eat their dinner. Lee explains to Chang that the day is his girlfriend's birthday, and they have decided to come for dinner at the spur of the moment, but when they arrive at the hostel, they find his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend at that same hotel and he is pestering her, so much that she can't even eat in peace. He tells Chang that he hopes Chang will help them get rid of the pest in the hotel. Zhang also lays his complaint, he tells Chang that he has come there for a blind date with his date, but he found out that his date was bullied on her way to that hotel by that skinny Yang. He says he is also in favor that Chang should get rid of Yang because he doesn't want to see Yang in his life again. Knowing how much they are both great clients of his company, Chang is more than ready to send away anyone who is a hindrance to them. He tells them that whoever offends them will surely take care of it. So they both point at Yang, telling Chang that he is the one who had offended them. Yang is intense, he understands he has control of that situation, and whoever they are, they are below his feet as the second highest equity shareholder of that company. As they point at him, Chang recognizes him as their new shareholder that the board had just sent out to announce. He knows he can't favor Zhang and Li over their company's new shareholder, so instead of commanding the security to send Yang away from the hotel, he calls the security to send away both Li and Zhang away from their hotel. While Li and Zhang are still shocked, he commands the security that they shouldn't let Li and Zhang into the hotel again, even in the future as they are no longer welcome in their hotel. Li asks him again if he understands what he is saying. He asks if he has heard right. He reminds Chang that he is their hotel's vegetable food supplier. Zhang also brags about his family's rights. He asks Chang if they are sure that they no longer need his family's investment. To make them understand exactly what is going on, he needs to let them know who they have offended. He tells them he will like to formally introduce them to Mr. Yang Chen, the second largest shareholder of their all-island hotel group. Yang sits majestically on the chair, still sipping his coffee. He comments that Mr. Chang really knows his stuff. The statement about Yang's position blows over everyone's heads. Really, he is indeed the second largest shareholder. Wang wonders what is going on. She had just met Yang when he was driving an online taxi. She wonders how the second largest shareholder of a great company like the All Island Hotel Group is driving an online taxi. She feels he is just a rich kid who feels like experiencing all that life has to offer to him. She feels that is the reason why he was that rude to her and why he speaks so viciously. Yang doesn't want to let go of his opportunity to shine too. He tells Li that he won't be needing to supply vegetable food to their hotel in the future, and for Zhang, their hotel will no longer need his family's investment, and they won't accept such an investment. He commands Chang to throw everyone there away because he doesn't want to see them. Fei Fei also sees how rich he is now. The major reason she had broken up with him before was that he was poor, and it seems like things have now changed for the better for him. She regrets her decision asking herself what she was thinking when she decided to break up with him. She thinks of what to do, he is now richer than she expects, and she doesn't want to let things go like that, and she considers if it's possible for her to beg for his forgiveness and go back to him. She feels it's better to be ashamed of that place than allow such a rich man to leave her life. She immediately gets on her knees to beg him. She tells him that she knows she was wrong when she broke up with him, and all she had just allowed Lee to do to her was hold her hand. She hasn't allowed him to have any intercourse with her, and she has nothing with him. She begs Yang and tells him that her body and her mind still belong to him and she has never left him. Her best friend, Kao Zin, doesn't want her to have that kind of fortune again, so she counters everything Zhu Feifei has said. She tells Yang that Zhu Feifei isn't a good woman for him and Zhu Feifei is just a young girl who loves vanity. She also wants him to date her, so she tells Yang that he should look at her. She is a young girl who is still clean, and he should come for her instead. He looks at them ridiculously, looking at how their stupid friendship ended, and says that they are about to start a bitch fight. 
Lee also knows his business will suffer so much loss if he stops supplying vegetables to a company as high as big as the All Island Company, so he tries to apologize too. He tells Yang that he didn't know that Ju Feifei is Yang's ex-girlfriend. He says that if he had known, even if God had given him a hundred guts, he wouldn't have used the guts to compete lady with a man as great as Yang. They are all filled with regrets, and they all try to pacify him in ways that matter to them, but he doesn't care. He hits his cup of tea on the table, asking manager Chang why he hasn't done as he has commanded and kicked those people out of the hotel. Chang immediately heeds to his command. He calls out to security and asks them what is their job, and they should do their job by sending those people out of the hotel. Chen Zio still struggles with the security. She tells him that she can explain what has happened to him. Li also screams and begs that he is wrong and Yang should forgive him. Chang feels reluctant to send Jiang away. He whispers to Yang that Jiang is the son of the chairman of Tainmu Investment. But Yang refuses to accept. He says that the investment won't get past the board as long as he is against it, and he asks what Chang is afraid of Jiang for. Since Yang has reassured Chang that there is nothing Jiang can do, Chang calls security to get rid of Jiang, too. He tells security they should blacklist Jiang and never allow him into their company again. Jiang refuses to accept that something that horrible can happen to a noble like him. He screams at the security and tells them not to touch him. He tells Chang that Chang should get his facts straight, and he reminds everyone there that he is Zhang, the son of the chairman of Tainmu Investment. He says that a mere second largest shareholder of All Island Hotel Group isn't someone that they at Tainmu will even put in their sight. He drags his date and tells her they should eat at a different place. Yang has evil thoughts, he feels he should have made Zhang go through humiliating things, and despite all that he has made him go through, Zhang didn't forget to call on Wang and even tell her that they should attempt. Eating at a different restaurant, he assumes that Zhang has taken a liking of Wang, and if he is unable to hurt Zhang by what he has done at that hotel, he will try to steal Wang from him so he will see if Zhang will still be as proud of himself as he is. He then calls out for Wang. He asks her who she is on a blind date with. He plucks some flowers and tells her that he has flowers with him and she should sit and let them have a conversation. He says it seems like he had scared her with his jokes in the car earlier, and he will like to apologize to her for the rude things he has done for her, so she should wait with him. Wang also considers going for him. She feels that since she is just going on a blind date with rich people, won't it be better for her to choose someone with a good personality and style? She turns and goes to meet Yang. She tells him that he seems sincere and he really wants to make amends, so she will give him a chance to make amends for what he has done since he is talking to her sincerely. She goes to take the flowers, leaving behind her real blind date. It looks like Zhang's composure evades him. He gets angry. He screams at Wang, asking her if she knows what she is doing at all. He reminds her that he is in that situation with Yang because he was trying to support her, and she is leaving him for Yang means that she is insulting him. She reminds him that he didn't do all he has done for her, but for him to save his face, she tells him that she didn't tell him to start a fight with Yang, and she reminds him that she even dragged him back so he wouldn't go to fight. But he had done there to pretend, and he failed. He gets angry at her, and he reminds her that it is Yang who is in a better position than him, and since he can't beat Yang, he thinks he can beat her. He tells her that if she dares sit down and have dinner with Yang, then she is shaming him. He asks her what she thinks will happen if she shames him. Instead of allowing her to listen to what Zhang has to say, Yang holds Wang by her back and tells her to sit down. He tells her that if a fly feels like he can disturb her, then he will get rid of the fly on her behalf so she can eat in peace. With all pride, she sits down and tells him thank you. Angrily, Zhang lifts his hand on her, but before his hand gets down to but her, Yang holds Zhang's hands. He tells him it is uncouth for a man to lay his hand on a woman. Chang calls security and he tells them that they should chase Zhang out of their hotel. They get there and they hold Zhang with their hands. Before he leaves the hotel, he tells Wang that he wouldn't spare her for what she has done to him. He tells Chang that he will go back home and tell his father what they have done to him, and he is sure his father wouldn't let them go with what they have done to him. Yang returns to the table and he pours a bottle of wine for Wang. He decides to formally introduce her to him. He tells her that his name is Yang Chen, and it is his pleasure for him to have that dinner with her. She also introduces herself. She apologizes for the bad review that she has kept for him and tells him that she will remove the bad review immediately after that date so they can both have a fresh start. But he tells her not to worry. He says that the bad review will be his reminder of their special encounter, and she doesn't need to remove it. He asks her to join him in the drinks, and they cheer. Other guests at the hotel who have witnessed what has happened talk about him. They feel what had happened was arrogant of the rich, and it was bad that he had directly snatched the blind date of the person who had picked a fight with him. The man sits and says that it is really a good thing to have money. Wang tries to know the level of riches of her present date. At least she had just left a man with generations of riches. She asks Yang what his family does. He tells her that his family had died several years ago, and he is now a car-hailing driver. 
He asks her what she does too, and she tells him that her hometown is Sioux City, and she currently works at a luxury shop, and the reason she had come to that blind date is that she wants to stay in that city. He doesn't feel bad that she is depending on a man before she can have a good life. He tells her that everyone has the right to pursue a better life and it is not a shame that a woman should rely on a man to give her a better life. He feels that compared to Zhao Feifei, his ex-girlfriend, Wang is a little more sincere, and she isn't the type who only runs for money. She tells him that she thinks he is right about what he has said and asks that they keep drinking. As they drink, she asks him if he knows the reason she was so prejudiced against him when she got into the car. She explains to him that she had two blind dates today and the first person whom she met was very nice to her, however, as they get to know each other better, he tried to kiss her when it was dark in the cinema. She asks for his opinion about the issue, and he tells her he thinks the major reason she felt like that towards the man is that she didn't just like him. He tells her that if she had taken a fancy to him before he did that act, there was no way she could have refused to kiss him. She has another opinion about the issue, she feels that is not the case with her, and it has nothing to do with being good looking or not being good looking. She asks him what kind of person kisses a girl on their first meeting, and if she has allowed something like that, she is sure her second meeting with him will be more outrageous. However, he explains to her that kissing has nothing to do with the first or second meeting. He says that kissing depends on the atmosphere and the feeling they both have at that moment. He says that it is even possible to do more things on the first meeting as long as the atmosphere is right and the feeling is there. She doesn't want to believe that he means all that he is saying to her. She asks him how anyone can be willing to kiss another person on their first meeting. He stands up, he walks towards her, and goes nearer to her lips. He plants a romantic kiss on her lips, he tells her that she should enjoy her meal, and put the bills for the meal on his tab. He tells her that he is going to room 1208 to rest. She holds her lips. She can't believe that she has just allowed a random man to kiss her. She asks herself why she didn't resist him from kissing her, maybe he is right about kisses. She thinks about the fact that he has told her his room number, and she wonders if he had purposely told her the room number so he could invite her to his room. She feels ashamed about what she is thinking about. She couldn't imagine that she would feel that way about a random man. Meanwhile, in room 1208, Young goes inside and has a shower. After his shower, he comes out of the bathroom holding a towel. He hears a knock on the door, and he just goes to open the door forgetting that he is with an open chest and just a towel on his waist. When he opens the door to her, she immediately drags him closer and plants her kiss on his lips. She calls her name, but he doesn't resist her. He holds her on her waist, and when she finishes, her face turns red as she is overwhelmed by the entire situation. His eyes get to her chest, he sees the two open buttons around her chest, and he comments that it is so hot. He realizes that she had drunk too much when he left her, and he tells her that she is drunk. However, she really feels like touching him, she keeps touching him, and she touches his chest, and she sees his eight-pack abs. She really wants to feel that abs on her hands, and she says she can't help it. She tells him that he shouldn't blame her for what she is doing because he is the one that started it first when he kissed her. He carries her in his hands like a baby, and he enters the room. He puts her on the bed, and he holds her body as he plants another kiss on her lips. She screams and reacts back to all his touch. I'm sure you can assume how that night ended. The following day, he is still at the hotel, and he wakes up late because of the night business. He checks beside his bed, and he sees that she is no longer there. He wonders if she has gone. He figures that she has gone, and he also tries to leave the bed. He sees that there is a blood stain on his bed, blood stain after having intercourse with a girl has just one meaning, and he really can't believe that is what is happening. He wonders if he is the one who has deflowered her, and he finds that she has left a letter for him in the room. He quickly goes to check the letter, in the letter, she tells him that he did well the night before and she is very pleased with him so she has decided to give him a service fee of 3000 for his service, and the fee is on the table. He can also see the money under the letter. She tells him that he shouldn't go out at all for the month, instead, he should use the other days in the month to get his strength back, and when she gets paid the next month, she will come back and pack him in for a night again. He wonders what is going on, and he couldn't help but comment that women are very interesting. That day, he has just a purpose which is for him to go to his former work building, the Zing Long Finance Building, and claim his new property. He goes there, and he meets with the receptionist. He introduces himself as Yong Chan telling her that he is there to collect his things. He is immediately directed to the manager, Manager Chan Chui, who welcomes him and introduces himself as the manager of the building office. Chan Chui tells him that he should give him a moment and he will get back to him with the property documents. The other workers in the building look at him. He looks so young and radiant, and one of them says that he is so young and he must be a rich kid. The other says she wonders if he will come up and lay off staff or will want to do any restructuring of the building. Chen Chui returns with a folder. He tells Yang that all his things are inside the folder already. He tells him that he can check the folder out and that if he has any problem, he can ask immediately, and they will fix it for him. 
he tells Chen that he doesn't have to worry. He says that he knows Chen is a very disciplined person and he isn't someone who will mess with his things, so he is rest assured that everything is going the way they should. He tells Chen that he pleads with them all at the management of the company, and that they should continue to help him manage the building. Chen calls all the other staff. He tells them to come over and welcome Yang with him. They all bow to welcome him. He greets them all, and he tells them that they should all go back to work. It's time for him to ensure he punishes his former employer. He asks Chen about his former company telling him that he wants to know more about the people that rented floor 15. Chen asks him to hold on, and he checks the computer to bring out all the information about the people who rented floor 15. They see that the occupant is Zhang Jingyan, and his contract in that building expires by the end of the month. He tells Chen that it has just happened that their lease is coming up, and he really needs to brag about his accomplishment, so he tells Chen that they should go up and talk with Zhang, and Chen says yes. They leave for his former company, as they are about. To get there, Chen tells Yang that he is sorry, but he has an appointment with another client, who is coming in to ask about their rent that day, so Chen couldn't enter into the office with Yang, and Yang tells Chen that he can pick up his call and he will enter the office on his own first. He enters the finance company and he meets his former colleagues. He greets them and tells them that it looks like they are all busy with work. They are shocked that he had the audacity to come back to that office, considering how he had left. One of his colleagues who are concerned about him comes to meet him. He was him why he had resigned and tells him that they should go and apologize to Mr. Zhang and manager Lai together. He appreciates his colleague's kind gesture, but he says he isn't there to apologize. He says he is there for his salary, which Zhang didn't pay him before he left. He screams that they should call Zhang for him so Zhang can pay him what he owes him. He shouts that Zhang should stop hiding in the office like a coward and he should come out. Zhang comes out with pride. He asks why Yang is shouting at his office and asks him what kind of place he thinks he is. He asks him if he thinks he is at a place where he can shout mindlessly. Yang speaks back at him. He says that he is shocked that Zhang came out and he had thought Zhang would be too scared to come out. He asks Zhang if Zhang has the commission he owes him. Zhang also wants him to come back to work because he knows how much the company is enjoying from his good work. He says that he will give Yang the commission he wants but Yang should first be a good boy and return back to work. He says he would give Yang about 10,000 for 10 months and as long as he closes at least one single deal from that month till forever. However, that isn't their initial promise. Yang says Zhang is talking like a fart. He reminds Zhang that he clearly promised him a 20% commission on a successful case without any strings attached. Zhang refuses to admit fault. He asks Yang where the proof of that promise is. He asks if he has any proof or if he is just deciding based on what he remembers that he was promised. He mocks Yang asking him that what if he was promised that he would work for free for the rest of his life, will he like to redeem that promise? Yang claims that everyone in the company was there when he made the promise. He says that everyone heard him when he said it, and the evidence is in everyone's mind. So Zhang asks the other workers in the room if any one of them heard that promise. No one wants to jeopardize their work because they want to be a witness of truth, so no one supports Yang. The first worker says that they didn't hear anything, and it must have been Yang who heard it wrongly. He looks at the workers. He wonders if none of them realized that what happened to him that day could happen to any of them next time, and it was just his turn that day, and it could be their turn soon. Another of his colleague tells him that Zhang has been extraordinarily kind to him, so he should hurry up and thank Zhang so he can come back to work. Zhang also feels proud of himself. He claims the only reason he is giving Yang a second choice is that he loves Yang's talent, and that's Yang's last choice, so Yang shouldn't be insensitive. He commands Yang to get back to his seat and get to work. He says he has to go downstairs and speak to the building management about renewing of the leases so he doesn't have time to waste with Yang. He claims he is doing a great job asking Yang if he thinks it's easy for him as a boss to support many employees. The other employee bow to him, and they tell him that they should all be grateful to Zhang for giving them a good platform for them to show their good talents. However, Yang doesn't feel like an employer is doing his employee a favor by paying them. He says it is really unreasonable that he came out to work just to earn money, but he can't even get the salary that he deserves, yet they want him to be grateful for finding a work platform. He tells them that he has recorded all they have said, and he will be filing for an arbitration right now. He claims he can't believe that the law won't be able to control Zhang. Zhang doesn't want that audio to leak anywhere. He screams and asks his employee to close the gate and grab Yang's phone. They go to the gate to close it, and when they do, Mr. Chen wonders what has happened in the office. He wonders if nothing has happened to his new boss. Zhang tells Yang that he will only allow him to leave there alive if he deletes the recording he has made. Filled with anger, Zhang takes one of his company's computers and breaks it hoping it will make Yang scared. He then pushes the accusation of breaking the computer on Yang. He tells Yang that everyone saw that he broke the company's computer, so his salary was deducted to pay for the computer he has broken. But Yang tells him that his recording is still going on and that what Zhang had just done has been recorded. 
He tells Zhang that there is no way he could escape from what he has done. He also explains that there is a feature on his phone which is called Cloud Backup. He asks Zhang if he doesn't understand that even if he deletes what is on the phone, everything there is still backed up in another place he can retrieve it from. Zhang realizes he is trapped. He calls Yang a lowlife, asking him how he dared to come to his office and record him. He says that Yang is so shameless. One of the workers who is supporting what Zhang has done wonders why Zhang is trying to have a conversation with Yang. He tells Zhang that there is no point talking with Yang and they can just beat him up, destroy the phone and even destroy the backup on the phone so that when the police arrive, they will say that Yang came to their office to smash their computer and they had to forcefully subdue Yang. It turns out that Chen is eventually done with his call. He starts banging on the door so they can open the door for him. Zhang goes to open the door to Chen, and he wonders why Chen has decided to visit their company in person. He says that he was just about to come down and talk to Chen about how they can renew the lease. However, Chen tells him that he isn't there because of rent and that he is there to see Yang. He asks them why they are locking the company's door in the middle of the day. He hopes that they haven't done anything to Mr. Yang. Jiang is shocked that Yang has a connection with Chen. He asks Chen which Mr. Yang he is talking about, but Chen asks him which other Mr. Yang it could be. He points to Yang, who is standing there, and says it's the same Yang he is referring to. He tells Jiang that Yang is the new boss of their building and asks if they are trying to do something bad to the new boss. Jiang exclaims in a very shocked manner. He couldn't believe his ears, do Chen really mean that Yang isn't the new boss of their building? Chen enters the office, and he goes to meet his boss. He asks Yang what is happening in that office. He apologizes for being late and tells Yang that he shouldn't have taken the call in the first place. But Yang tells him that he is fine and he doesn't have to worry. He tells Chen that Chen has come at the right time. Zhang goes to meet Chen. He doesn't want to believe that Yang is really the new boss and asks Chen what he means by the new boss of their building. Chen explains to him that, for the records, Yang has paid two billion dollars in full to buy that property, and he is now the bona fide owner of the property. He explains further to Zhang that Yang is now in charge of the property and he can do anything he wants with it. The staff is shocked. Some of them feel that Yang really spent over $2 billion on a property and they wonder why he had come to work at that office in the first place. They feel that he has just come there to experience the life of a rich kid. They remember that he had left the office just the day before and the following day he bought the entire building, and they conclude that what Yang has done is a clear sign of revenge. The manager of the finance company who had suggested that Zhang beat Yang up doesn't want to believe it either. He knows what can happen to him if it is true that Yang owns the entire company. He whispers to Chen's ears, asking him if it's possible that he had made a mistake. Maybe Yang just has the same name as his new boss, and it's not really Yang that is with them. Chen gets angry at them. He asks them if they are calling him blind and asks them that if he doesn't know who the boss of the company is as the manager, then who should know who the boss is? Zhang bows to apologize. He tells Yang that he shouldn't be angry and that everything that had just happened in that place was a misunderstanding. He holds Zhang's hands telling him that it is true that he has done something wrong and he should be punished, but instead of accepting his punishment, he is ready to double back the salary he is owing Yang and he will pay it immediately so they can resolve the misunderstanding between them. Chen doesn't understand what is happening. He hasn't seen Yang in that building before, so to resolve his dilemma, he asks Yang if he has worked at that company before and if they are indeed owing him a salary. Yang replies affirmatively, and Chen gets angry. He directs his anger to Zhang, reminding him of the clause in their lease agreement. He tells him that it is written in their lease agreement that they must operate in good faith according to the law, otherwise, they have the right to terminate the contract and claim got triple of the rent. He asks Zhang if he has forgotten that the clause existed in their contract. That makes Yang happier because it means he has. Another means of getting money, he brings out his phone, which he has used to record all. Zhang has said to him, and he asks if there is indeed a clause like that and tells Chen to listen to the conversation between himself and Zhang. The conversation starts from when Zhang has told him that if he wants a commission, then it's fine, but he has to obediently come back to work and after every month, as long as he settles at least a single deal every month, he will be given 10,000. Zhang realizes that he has lost the whole fight. He begs Yang to listen to him and tells him that they should let bygones be bygones. He says he will give Yang triple of the commission that he is owing him, and Yang should please delete the recording so that they can settle the matter amicably. But Yang refuses his offer. He doesn't need money. He is already richer than he expects himself to be. He tells Zhang that he just wants the amount he is owed and nothing more than that. He tells Chen that the matter is left to the management of the building, and he is sure they will handle it in such a way that he will be satisfied with their work. He attempts to leave the office, and Chen bows to him, telling him not to worry and that he will do everything the way he wants and even more than he wants. Zhang screams that he should stop. Zhang tells him that he has already given him, and he has admitted defeat. He asks Yang why Yang wants to drive him to the end. 
He begs Yang to leave him away out of the situation and asks Yang who he is sure that he won't fall into his hands in the future too. However, Yang tells him that he is the kind of person who never leaves his enemy with a way out, he says that if he felt a little bad about the company, he would have never left the company in the first place. So the fact that he left means he doesn't care about Jiang and he won't give him a way out, he asks Jiang to leave his way as he wants to leave. Jiang asks him if he is sure that there is no way he can allow him out of that situation. But Yang wonders who he is to have that kind of conversation with him now. Jiang realizes the only way he can evade responsibility is for that phone to be destroyed. So he commands all his staff that if anyone can snatch that phone away from Yang's hand, he will give the person 50,000 immediately. He expects that they will all jump at the deal, but that deal isn't enough for them to lose their integrity. He decides to increase the reward and says he will give them 100,000 cash immediately when he sees that no one stands up to do his demands. He adds that he will also double the salary of the successful person. Again, no one stands up to meet his demands. Yang laughs at him. He asks him if he thinks his words still have any credibility. He says that Jiang can't even give him the commission he deserves for the orders he has made, and he thinks he will keep up for such a promise. He asks him if he thinks everyone is stupid enough to remove this mere buff. Yang holds his phone tightly in his hand so no one will collect it, and Chen takes his phone to call the management floor. Chen commands that all of the office staff and building security should come to the 15th floor immediately. About 10 minutes after Chen makes that call, all the workers on the first floor arrive on the 15th floor. They wonder what is going on and why their manager has called them into that room because such has never happened before. One of them expresses her concern to her colleague, who tells her she has no idea, but she also knows that all the security guards are at that same place. They wonder if the owner of the Jingyan advertisement, Jiang, offended their manager. Chen stands there courageously, asking to see which of the worker will go and touch Yang as Jiang has commanded them to. Jiang starts sweating. He never could have imagined that he would be in that situation just because he didn't give a staff commission. He regrets all that has happened, but it is too late. On the other hand, Yang is excited. He tells Chen that he will leave everything happening to Chen's hand as he wants to leave immediately. Again, Chen reassures him that he doesn't have to worry and he will ensure he will do everything beautifully the way he wants it to be done. Before leaving the office, Yang addresses the other staff. He knows that Jiang has equally been treating them horribly. He tells them that he is sure Zi will be out of business that day, but while he is settling accounts with Jiang, why doesn't they hurry up and take revenge on whatever they want to give back to Jiang for how he has treated them? He tells them that if they don't take what they want to take now, when Jiang is fined and he goes bankrupt, they won't be able to take back what he is owing them, and they will get nothing. The first worker screams. He says that Jiang often forces them to work overtime, and he doesn't pay them for the extra time they have worked. Another one says that Jiang forces them to sign shady contracts. One says that he also deducts their wages without any reason. It turns out that it is his manager, Lai, who has always supported Jiang in whatever he does, and it's also this same Lai that first brought the suggestion that they should beat Yang up. Jiang can't watch and allow Lai to add to his punishment. He asks Lai not to throw stones at him as they do everything together, but Lai refuses. Lai says that he is against sin and he has always hated Lai, but he couldn't resist against what Jiang is doing because he had to work under him. He tells Jiang that now that Yang is leading their charge to report him, he has to stand up against evil to the end. Yang knows how much they have both manipulated all the staff, he knows they are in it together, and he comments that Lai's leg is really fickle. Following everything that happens that day, Jiang's advertisement company is closed up. He stands in front of the closed office telling Yang that he has ruined him, but he won't allow him to get away with it. But Yang tells him that he is the one who ruined himself, and he asks him not to blame anyone for his misfortune and says that there are rules in the world and he doesn't get to do whatever he wants to do just because he is the boss. Yang addresses the staff. He tells them that he is going to open an advertising agency soon and he will be using that same office. He asks them if they are interested in working under him, and they can come over if they are interested. The staff screams that they are interested since they are all already out of job. Lai also calls that he is interested in working under Yang. But Yang asks Jim if he isn't Jiang's loyal slave. He says that there is no point in taking a loyal slave. He tells Lai to get out, telling him that he isn't welcome in the new company. Lai starts crying. He kneels to beg Yang telling him that if he goes to the labor arbitration with Yang to sue Zhang, will Zhang accept him then? Yang refuses. He tells him that even if he goes to kill Zhang, he still won't give him a job. He says that there is no bottom line for people like him, and there is no way he can keep him. He kicks him and tells him to get out of there. He addresses the other staff. He tells them that in half a month at the most, they can come back to work. From that moment on, the company management will be handed over to one of the staff, Zhu Ziali, and if any of them have an issue, they should go directly to Zhu Ziali. 
He tells them that the break he has given them is for them to have a holiday they should go home and rest for a while, and they should come back when they get the notice to come back so they can work properly. Suzayali can't imagine that he has made her the manager. She asks him again to be sure she has heard right. She tells him that she doesn't have any experience working as a manager, and she fears that she may make a mistake. However, he is sure of his decision. He admonishes her that it is okay to be inexperienced and that as long as she learns the rope, she will be fine. She is glad about the position. She reassures him that she will listen to him well and she will study hard so she can do well in that position. They cheer themselves up so they can bow to their new boss. They bow to Yang and tell him thank you. He attempts to leave the company and they all wave to him to greet him goodbye. And he greets them back, telling them that he will see them soon. He returns to the park so he can continue his car hailing services. He has executed the two revenge he has in mind, and with those revenge done, he feels it's the best time for him to return to work. He enters the car, and he gets a notification that he has a new order about 500 meters from his location. He feels the passenger is on his way to where he is going, and he can take her, he accepts the offer, and he starts going. He sees that the passengers are a young lady and a man, the lady seems familiar to him, and he says she looks like his college friend, Wang Lixen. He feels that he can't be a coincidence. When he gets nearer to them, he confirms that it is really his college friend. They take the cab, and when Wang enters the cab, she recognizes him, and she wonders how come he is the one riding the car. He greets her and tells her that it is indeed a coincidence that they are meeting again in that situation. He asks her if she is hanging out with her boyfriend. She feels it is about time that she introduces him to her partner. She introduces her partner as Zhang Jiankun, so that means he is encountering another Zhang. I mean, that will be the third Zhang he is encountering in that manhua. She tells Zhang that the driver is her university classmate, Yang Chen. She tells him that at that time, when they are at the university, he was the top student in their class, and he was also very handsome. In Zhang's head, the first thing he imagines is that Yang is very popular with the girls. She tells him yes and tells him that many girls in their school then liked Yang. It was just a pity that, as of then, he had a girlfriend. She concentrates on Yang again. She asks him if he has broken up with his then-university girlfriend. She feels it's a bad way to ask a man if he has broken up with his girlfriend, so she rephrases the question and asks him how far they are now. She asks him if he will end up getting married to her. However, he tells her that they have broken up, and she, therefore, comments that it was a shame that he turned down all the girls that wanted him in the university to pick his girlfriend and asks him if he regrets his decision now. He replies to her that he only turned her down and there is no point why she is bringing up that issue. She tells him that she didn't mean it in that way. She says that at least she has to thank him for turning her down because if he didn't turn her down in public and scolded her back then, she would be living a miserable life with him at the moment. Jang realizes that Yang also humiliated his girlfriend in public. He asks her how he had humiliated her, and she explains that she was just 19 when she confessed her love to him, as at then, he could only reject her, but he couldn't humiliate her. Yang tries to change the conversation. He tells them that so much time has gone since that issue happened, and he has forgotten what he even said to reject her then. However, he tells her that if he had said something bad to her when they were having that conversation, he is very sorry and he is apologizing to her now. Jang feels like he is poor. He tells him that since he is sincerely apologizing to her, his company is short of a clerk, and the job of the clerk is only to serve tea in the office and clean up. He asks Yang if Yang would like to stop driving the car and come work with him at his company. His girlfriend also feels proud. She tells him that her boyfriend is the planning manager of Heian Advertising Company, and if he goes to work under her boyfriend, she can ask her boyfriend to take care of him. Contrary to how they have thought he would jump at that offer, he rejects the offer without any doubt. He tells them that he thinks he is fine driving an online car and he doesn't need a job as a clerk. He feels the heat in the car and he turns down the window. Wang shouts at him. She asks him why he is opening the window. She tells him that he should close the window immediately and turn on the air conditioning because she feels so hot. He tries to explain to her that the order didn't make it compulsory for him to turn on the air conditioning. He says that it is not impossible for him to turn on the air conditioning for them if they want, so they should say a few nice words to him, and he will turn on the air conditioning for them when he is happy with them. Jan gets angry at him. He asks him what he is talking about, and says that if not for the fact that he was Wang's college classmate, he would have done hell to him a long time ago. He commands Yang to turn on the air conditioning and not make him angry. Wang tries to control her boyfriend, and she tells him not to be that impulsive with Yang because Yang is driving. She tells him that if he hits Yang, he will be finished when the car goes out of control because they may all die. She tries to speak to Yang in a calm manner. She reminds him that they are old school friends and he should please turn on the air conditioning, and she will pretend like what has happened didn't happen at all. 
She threatens that if he doesn't switch on the air conditioning, she will give him a bad review and also lay a complaint against him, and he can't blame her when she does so. He asks them if they think they can scare him with bad reviews, and he tells them that they can get out of his car if they know they aren't interested in riding in his car. Jang angrily tells him to pull over the car so they can stop. As he has asked, Young stops the car, Jang comes out of the car with his girlfriend, and he asks Young to also come out. He screams to Yang to come out of the car, but Yang refuses to come out. Jang hits the car's door, telling Yang to come out, but Yang remains inside the car. He tells them that he isn't going to get out of the car and that since it is hot, they can just take their there and enjoy the summer sun. He zooms off immediately without saying anything more. Jang runs after the car screaming that Yang should stop, but Yang doesn't respond to him. They don't know where they are. Wang asks her boyfriend if he knows which location they are, they look ahead, trying to see if there is a way they can get a ride, but they see that they are at a bridge over the river and it seems like parking is not allowed on that bridge so they can't even ask anyone for a ride there. They both wonder what they should do. Angrily, Jang decides that he will give Yang a bad review and also lay a complaint, but if only they know that is the best way they can reward him, and that's what he is looking forward to. Jang believes that his bad review will put Yang out of work. Immediately after they give him the bad review, Yang receives a notification that he has gotten a new bad review. The system congratulates him for earning a bad review and rewards him with 2 million in cash. He laughs at them, saying that they must be having a nice time under the sun over a bridge in the middle of the day with no help coming for them. Suddenly, he checks their college class group, and he sees that Wang has left a message on the group. She says that she went out and ordered a car hailing, and when she entered, she saw it was Yang driving the car. She thought she could help him as a classmate, but he threw her out of the car on a bridge. All the students start asking several questions, some asking him why he is now doing car hailing, and others asking why he resigned from his advertising company. He decides to reply to them. He tells them that he had quit his job a few days ago and he is driving an online car for a while. He tells them that if they feel ashamed to be with him, they can pretend not to know him whenever they see him. He tells them that he will send the recording of the car trip to customer service for review, and he will also send the recording to the group so they can all hear what Wang did. Wang gets furious, she knows what she has done is bad, and she tells Jang that Yang has sent the recording to the group, and now everyone in the group is blaming her. They both walk on the bridge, and Jang promises that he is going to kill Yang. He tells Wang to send Yang a message that she is treating him to a party at the Hing Hotel on Sunday so they can lure him in, and she will see how he is going to make him look bad in front of all their classmates. Wang supports the idea. She commends her boyfriend that he is smart and they can really get Yang. He gets a notification that Wang wants to invite him for a dinner at Ning Hotel to apologize for what she has done the last time. He says whether he will go to the party or not depends on how he feels on that day, and if he is in a good mood, he will attend the party. He says it is a beautiful day, and he is sure that Wang and her boyfriend must be enjoying themselves on the bridge. He gets another order, and he goes to pick up his passenger. When he gets to the location, he calls that the car has arrived and asks the passenger where she is. It is raining, so she asks him how he expects her to get there in the rain. She tells him that he should come to where he is so he can get her there. He tells her to wait, saying that he will come there to pick her up. He picks up an umbrella from his car so he can go pick her up. He enters the rain to get to where she is, and when he gets there, he asks if she is his passenger, Ms. Zhang. At this point, we have to ask the author what he has with the name Zhang because this is the fourth Zhang that Yang will be meeting in the course of this story. He gets to her with an umbrella, but instead of her to humbly walk into the car with the umbrella, she complains that there is water on the ground and she can't walk across the water. She sits there expecting him to carry her to the car, but he refuses to do that. He tells her that he doesn't offer that kind of service except she is disabled. She asks him to look at her new shoes. She asks him if he knows how expensive those shoes are and there is really so much water on the ground, and she fears that her show may get wet if she walks to the cab. It really seems like Yang has a thing with toxic passengers. She further tells him that she knows a lot of people who will be very happy to carry her, but she hasn't given them a chance instead, she is giving him that chance to carry her. However, he doesn't care about how many people are queuing to carry her. He tells her that all those things she is saying don't matter to him, and all he knows is that he doesn't provide that kind of service. The best he can do for her is to give her an umbrella, and he has done so, so she should walk to the car by herself. He stretches the umbrella to her, but she calls him a dumb bastard. She collects the umbrella from him, and she reluctantly walks to the car herself. 
she tells him that even before their trip starts, he has already made her unhappy. She warns him that he shouldn't make her unhappy again till the trip ends because if he does so, she will make a complaint against him. The trip begins, and without giving a comment about the stupid words she has said, Young tells her that she should fasten her seatbelt because he is departing already. As they almost reach her destination, he tells her that when she arrives at her destination, she can get off with her personal belongings, but she refuses. She insists that there is too much water on the floor and she has gotten her shoe dirty. She claims that she can't walk back on her own again, and he has to drive the car upstairs for her to come down. Like driving the car upstairs, it's really impossible, and it doesn't sound reasonable to a normal person. He reminds her that he is driving a car and not a plane. How is it possible for him to drive her upstairs? He offers to drive her to the door outside her location, telling her that she is just a few steps inside the house. Instead of reasoning with him, she screams at him and tells him that she doesn't care. She tells him that he has to take her upstairs or she will leave a very a bad review for him and even file a complaint. She reassures him that she isn't joking about what she has said, and if he doesn't do what she wants, she will file complaints against him. It's not like he cares about their reviews and complaints, so he tells her that she should get down and file her complaints. When she realizes that her threat about filing a complaint isn't working, she tells him that she wouldn't leave the car unless he takes her upstairs. He switches off the car's engine, he comes out of the car, closes the door, and tells her to remain in the car for as long as she wants. He tells her that he is off for a late night snack and he is leaving her. She opens the door and comes out of the car. She yells at him and tells him that he should wait as he will get her complaints report soon. She picks up her phone, and she types her complaints. He passes behind her and purposely splashes the water on the floor on her body, then he enters the car to leave. He zooms off the car in a fast manner and splashes more water on her body. She jumps away from the roadside calling him a bastard. He leaves happily, saying that it is really through that there are all kinds of people in this world, including someone like Ms. Jang, who feels entitled to special treatment. He tries to drink his tea happily, but he finds out that he is out of tea. He gets another notification. That a bad review has been given to him, and again he has received a complaint as his. Reward for that review, and just as he needs, the system will reward him with 50 grams of dried tea leaves from the mother tree Da Hong. The system tells him to open the truck, and he will find his rewards there. He is glad that the system really knows his worries and how they can solve them. He comments that it is really a great system. However, compared to the other rewards he has gotten, he wonders why his reward this time around is just 50 grams, and he says it is so less. However, the fairy tells him that although he doesn't. No, the tea of Mother Tree Da Hong is more expensive than gold, and the previous auction. Done for that tree was for 20 grams, and the auction price was 200,000, and now the tea is a rare item that money can't buy. He is so shocked that the tea is really expensive. He immediately goes to his truck to check his reward. He sees that the prices for the tea are really extravagant. He says he can't imagine each small packet is sold for 10,000. He puts the tear around his nose to smell it, and the smell blows his mind. He comments that the tea smells so well since he has 50 packs of it. It's not a bad idea if he tries one of the tea. He opens the tea, and he pours water into his bottle, and he gets another notification. The system says that they have detected that he has gotten another bad review, and he will get a triggered bonus. His triggered bonus will be the house at Binjong No. One villa, he is requested to stay at home, and the courier service will bring the house's property, deeds, and keys to his house. He screams he knows the No One Villa in Binjong. The house is around the riverside area, and it costs approximately about 500 million. He feels that the reward is very wonderful, and he wonders who has given him that bad review. He tastes the tea, and he sees that the fairy is really right. The tea tastes really good. He puts his bottle beside his wheel, and he goes to pick up his new passenger. He gets to the front of the young lady, and he asks her how she is doing when she sits inside the car, but she tells him to drive and shows him a sum of money, telling him that if he drives, the money is all his. He tells her that he isn't a taxi, he is an online car hauling, and she needs to place an order for him online before she can board his car, so she can please get out of the car and change to a taxi. She looks at him and wonders what is the nonsense he is telling her. She tells him that he should just drive when he is told to do so. She tells him she wants to ride in his car that day. Suddenly, another man comes towards the car, the man is making a call, and when he sees the lady inside the car, he goes nearer to Yang and tells him to open the door. The lady tells him not to open the door. She tells him that he can't open the door unless she tells him to, and if he opens the door, she will bite him to death. Yang asks her if she knows the man. She denies knowing him and tells Yang she doesn't know him. So Yang unwinds his window, and he tries to talk to the man asking him if he knows the lady in his car. The man yells at him. He says he knows her, and she is his girlfriend, so why won't he know her? However, the girl yells back at him. She asks him who is his girlfriend because he isn't his girlfriend. She narrates to Wang that they have just met for the first time that day on a blind date, and she doesn't know who she immediately became his girlfriend. 
However, the man insists that they weren't on a blind date. He calls her name, Wang Kiani, and reminds her that her father owes his father five million and her father used her as a gift to pay off the debts. He asks Wang why she is pretending to be stupid with him. He tells her to hurry up and come down from the car, telling her that he has booked a hotel and she shouldn't spoil his mood. Wang refuses to follow him. She asks Yang if he can't hear what the man is saying. She tells him that she isn't in a relationship with the man, and if Yang hands her over to him, the man will take her to a hotel and rape her, and she will tag Yang as an accomplice to the crime. The man speaks to Yang. He calls him kid and tells him everything that is happening has nothing to do with Yang. He asks him not to get involved and just open the door so the young lady can get out. Yang asks Wang why she isn't calling the police. He says that he is just an online taxi driver, and he doesn't want to get involved in the fight between them. She screams at him, she says that he is so laid back, and says he is just a jerk and he is of no use at all to her. He wonders why she is blaming him. He reminds her that the most disgusting thing in that conversation should be her dad. He has nothing to do with her, and he has no obligation to protect her, so she shouldn't blame him. However, if she really needs help, he can call the police for her. The man comes to the other side of the car. He goes to meet Wang, calling her a bitch and asking her to come out. She screams and tells him to go away. She turns to Yang, and this time around, she tries to plead with him. She begs him to do her a favor and save her. He is still of the opinion that there is nothing much that he can do. He tells her the best bet is for her to call the police. She tells him that she will like to call the police, too, but even if the matter gets to the police, her family doesn't have the money to pay the man back. The man keeps screaming outside the car, and he tells her to come out of the car, or he will kill her inside the car. He drags her head, and he talks to Yang. He tells him that he should open the car and let him get in so they can drive to the suburbs. He promises Yang that he will let him play with the girl after he is done playing with her. That statement angers Yang. He starts his vehicle. The man screams at him, asking him what he is doing. He says that if Yang dares take the girl away, he will find Yang and kill him, even if he has to search the whole city. He says his name is Jiang Hengjai, the son of the Yu group. This makes it the fifth Jang in this same story. Yang tells him that he doesn't care who he is, and Yang drives away. The man screams behind the car, and when he sees that Yang doesn't care, he tells them to wait for him as he will surely do his revenge. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.